I started this research project because I wanted to answer a question for myself. Who really made the games in the Silent Hill series? There are plenty of myths and rumors and popular ideas of what happened back in the early days, but much of it is mired in bad research or is limited to what we have available in English. It's tough to research this kind of thing, after all. It's a series that's over 20 years old, made in a foreign country, and it's hard to track down the people who worked on these games and what they actually did. But that's what I started doing. I searched for social media presences, resumes, LinkedIn accounts, YouTube channels, anything I could find. I read hundreds of gaming magazines. English, Japanese, Russian, French, German. Using Google Translate, I began searching Japan Yahoo, wiki pages and gaming sites, reading through chat boards, looking for interviews and sources for the dev team's history. I read pages upon pages of official Konami documents and memos, decades of economic reports, and I still kept digging. My original plan was a video update of my team's silent documentary, but the more I read and the more I dug into it, the more I realized I needed to change the direction of what I was making. The truth was, it wasn't as straightforward as there being a Team Silent that made the first four games, and it wasn't as simple as Konami cancelling them after the fourth game. My goal here isn't to try and downplay the importance of the Japanese developers, or to ignore valid critiques of later games that struggled. Instead, I want to reframe the discussion to show what really happened. The original games were developed by changing teams at Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo, each with their own central themes and motifs, which struggled to find ground after the breakout success of the first game. The later games would continue struggling in a changing world of expensive PS2 and 3 titles, a huge game dev budget, and a central Konami leadership that cared less about games and their creators than a quick buck. When controversy arose because of this, the company decided to shove the game in the back of a closet and ignore it, rather than address the real problems, and it's possible we'll never see an official release again. That's not the fault of any of the Western or Eastern developers. It's a consequence of a problem that started all the way back in the beginning, with the first game in 1996. Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo, Inc. stood at 1810 Harumi, Shoku, Tokyo, and was a subsidiary of the larger Konami Co., founded in 1969 as a jukebox rental and repair business. The name was a portmanteau of the last names of the three founders, Kozuki, Nakama, and Miyasako. Konami Though the official founding date is listed as 1995, the first game that K-Set was credited with came out in 94, Herodias, a parody of the Gradius series. Their next title would be J-League Jikyo Winning Eleven, a sports game, followed by Sukoden, an RPG. All three would spawn long-running series. Tokimeki Memorial, a dating sim which released only in Japan, would explode in popularity. By 1997, a movie adaptation of the game was being made, and it sold more than a million copies. All of these games had sold over 500,000 units, and the company's net sales for the year came to more than a million yen. Other games released included Vandal Hearts, Goldstorm, and International Track and Field. The next year, Winning Eleven would get a European adaptation called International Superstar Soccer Pro, which exploded with 700,000 units sold. Japan also saw major sales with a Sega Saturn version of Tokimeki, cementing the game's place in the dating sim genre. Castlevania Symphony of the Night came out that year and would total a million sales in Japan, US, and Europe. Net sales for the year would double from the year before. The company was not doing bad at all. It had a few games that weren't major hitters, but it had a lot of major successes. Sports games were doing well for them. Sukoden and Tokimeki were huge in Japan, and Castlevania Symphony of the Night would make the series a household name for gamers the world over. 
The oldest records of KSET's organizational chart comes from 2002, and other documents seem to reinforce the idea that this has been the basic outline of the company from the beginning. From the top, the board of directors, president and corporate officers, the audit office and management committee all oversaw the lower level divisions. These divisions were divided into three sections, corporate planning, production, and production support. Within those divisions were separate offices and departments. The production department was divided into first production department, second production department, and so on. The production supporting department included HR, technology research, systems office, and more. The production departments are the bulk of the people that make games. For the most part, they're generically named, but later maps will list sections for specific production teams and include brand producers for major titles, none of which included Silent Hill. Two corporate officers would be named the brand producers of major K-Set titles, Winning Eleven and Tokimeki Memorial. But the term Team Silent never seems to appear in any of the official paperwork I've found. I've not found it online either. In Japanese articles, fan sites, and even the Wikipedia page, there is no mention of a Team Silent or a name for the people who created the series. Only foreign language sites use the term. In comparison, the team that made Tokimeki Memorial series has a Wikipedia page and an official name, Virtual Kiss Production. The Winning Eleven team has a page, and KSET's former Production Department 2 and Development Department 7 were both named part of Winning Eleven Production. It's difficult to find official paperwork on the organization of the company or the various positions of its employees, those sums available through the various websites they've used over the years. A more detailed record has been kept by Japanese fans at the Game Staff Wiki, and while it's possibly prone to error, it's the best record that can be found. KSET was sometimes called the Research and Development Department by headquarters. It was divided into the production groups, but people would be moved through various groups, even during projects. Once someone's work had finished on one game, they might be slid around to another game that needed them. The earliest possible mention of a Team Silent production group must be here. Gozo Kitao, producer on the first Silent Hill, is the deputy director of Development Group 7 in 1996 through 1998, working under director Kazuhisa Hashimoto. It's possible this was the division that worked on the first game, not only due to the time period and Kitao's involvement, but also because of who was named as his superior, as Hashimoto was apparently instrumental to Silent Hill in its early days. Over the course of about a decade, nearly 186 people worked on the first four Silent Hill games. Central figures from the first game, like the director, multiple programmers, and artists, would all leave. Only 20% of Silent Hill 2's team would consist of people who worked on the first title. In addition, the way the game was made changed completely. Silent Hill 1 was a small passion project, with a group of about 10 central team members who wrote and created the game and its core concepts during team meetings. Everyone was involved and had a say in what would be made. That simply wouldn't be possible for Silent Hill 2. The game would get larger and larger, ending up with a team of about 60 to 70 people and the actual game content would change three times as a consequence of these changes. It simply got too large for the people involved to deal with by themselves, to the point that Imamura, who originally was the director of the game, stepped back and became producer of the project, no longer heavily involved in creating what the game would become, but overseeing the general production of the game because it was just too large to leave alone. 13% of Silent Hill 3's team worked on Silent Hill 1, and 20% of them worked on 2. The game's central figures would be Ito, Yamaoka, Owaku, and a programmer named Hatakeda Norihito, without whom the team wouldn't have had a game engine at all. Only Yamaoka would return for Silent Hill 4. Silent Hill 4 had 8% of Silent Hill 1's team, 27 of Silent Hill 2's, and 16 of Silent Hill 3's. 
The only core leaders of the game who had been leaders on other titles were Tsuboyama and Yamaoka. Others, like Yuri Shingo, had smaller roles in previous titles. At any point in Silent Hill's early development, at least two projects were happening. Shortly after or during the end of Silent Hill's development, the play novel was developed, with some overlap in the publicity and producer departments, though few of the original team would work on it. Silent Hill 2, however, would split into two teams, with the Xbox version of the game being made by a separate team, with only some overlap. Silent Hill 3 and 4 would be made almost at the same time. There were always two Silent Hill teams at work. Akira Yamaoka said in an interview, My Silent Hill team. My team, as opposed to another implying there was more than one, and truthfully, there was. Not to mention, these games themselves don't feel like a series made by an unchanging core team. Compare them to the Fatal Frame series. These games have always been helmed by Kikuchi Kisuke and Shibata Makoto, and you can feel the difference. There is a core concept in Fatal Frame that never changes, Despite the fact the games are often about different places and people, the first three titles feel like a series that builds upon one another, like they are a conversation that you miss part of if you don't play all three games. The Silent Hill games feel like an anthology, with different writers penning each title. The first game was Toyama's, with heavy influence from Takahashi Isao on the imagery and Imamura Akihiro on the programming. None of them would be heavily involved in the later games. Silent Hill 1 was a weird, difficult horror that bordered on the absurd and had no real resolution to its story. Silent Hill 2 was completely different. A story about emotion and trauma with the ultimate twist, dreamt up by Owaku and Sato. Sato would leave after this game, and none of the later games would have the same cinematic feeling, the sense of alienation and voyeurism that came from his beautiful CG cutscenes. The third game was heavily Owaku's and Masahiro Ito's. Owaku wanted to write a new kind of fear, something a middle-aged man wouldn't understand, so the third game became the story of a young woman. Neither of them would touch the fourth game, which was Suboyama's brainchild a game meant to draw on Japanese culture and themes, and the horrors of being trapped in your own home. None of the games had the same team, let alone the same core team of leaders. Even if Akira Yamaoka always made the music and produced the games, the games themselves changed hands so much they barely feel connected. Kingdom Hearts, Fatal Frame, Pokemon, the third and fifth Devil May Cry games, they feel like they're made of the same lifeblood. Something in them is carried over by the same team members working on them, whether it's a returning director or a continuous game company like Game Freak or a team like Project Zero. Something didn't change. But Silent Hill just kept changing over and over and never seemed to settle. And there's a reason why. And it all goes back to the first game, the success Konami could never recreate. The first Silent Hill would sell fantastically worldwide. First, the United States and Canada received the game in February of 1999. Japan and Hong Kong were next on March 4th. In Europe, it was released on August 8th in the UK, France, Germany, Italy, Holland, Spain, and Portugal, and would also make its way to Australia around that time. A very unofficial pirated copy of the game would pop up in Russia that year, from a hacked copy of an American game, but they wouldn't receive an official release. The game would sell over 2 million copies, giving it an American PlayStation Greatest Hits release. In the PAL region covering Europe, the Middle East, South Asia, and Africa, it became an Essentials Platinum title, a PS1 game that sold over 400,000 units worldwide in its first year of sale. It was a PS1 books title, the top-selling label for Japan and parts of Asia. In November 1999, it received a gold award from the German VUD, indicating a game that sold more than 100,000 copies across Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. 
It was given on September 30th, which means it sold that amount in its first month after release. In Japan, the game would sell more than 100,000 units in its first week, opening at number two for the top game sold in Japan. The next week would add another 50k, dropping it to third place. It would remain on the top 30 list for seven weeks, finishing out at more than 235,000 units sold before it fell off the list. That first year, from March until December, it sold a total of 293,427 units, the 55th best-selling game in the country, averaging at about 1,600 units sold a week. KSET's official site would list the game as having sold 1.5 million units in Japan, the United States, and Europe in 1999. It would be the best-selling Silent Hill game in Japan and Europe. It was a massive success. A small new title started as something of an underdog with a bunch of newer team members, experimenting with new technology going on to create a masterpiece. Problem was, it never hit that success again. In 2001, Silent Hill 2, widely considered the landmark horror game title, one of the best games of all time was released around the world. In Japan, the game was received with mild success. It would sell a third of what the first game did in its first year, 120,000 units. Fans did not like it. They complained it wasn't a sequel. They complained about the monsters being different. Reading chat rooms from the time of the release reveals a shocking amount of discontent and dislike for one of gaming's most famous horror titles. It was a major blow to K-Set. Sure, it had succeeded, but Silent Hill 2 had been expensive to make. They'd used motion capture for every cutscene and actually acted the game out on a stage, a process that took four months. They'd allowed Sato Takayoshi to branch off and create his own digital art studio in the United States. It was so expensive, his studio lost money working on Silent Hill 2 in spite of the game's success. The truth was, all PS2 games were more expensive to make, and it would only keep getting worse. PS1 games like Silent Hill were cheap by comparison, and Silent Hill had made so much money. The expenses would just keep rising while the earnings continued to fall. Silent Hill 3 would be a real sequel, since that had been the complaint about 2, but it wouldn't help sales in Japan. It would only sell 90,000 units its first year. 4 would be a more Japanese-style game, and it would fare the worst in Japan, selling only 67,000 units. One forum in Japan discussing the games had a section on the fourth title that was something to the effect of, why is this game so bad? Even Western reviewers at various points in the series' history weren't that fond of the games. The fact that 2 was not a sequel was a common complaint, and many people said the story wasn't good. 3 would be seen as unimpressive, too much of the same, not complex enough. 4 would do alright in reviews in the West, but had its own struggles due to a short development cycle and small budget, and people complained about the lack of bosses and puzzles. The truth is, Silent Hill as a series was caught in a struggle every horror game series would be caught in, a struggle horror has always fought with. It's not a universally appealing topic. Not everyone likes to be scared. When you spend too much money on a horror project, there comes a breaking point where the project can't possibly earn enough to be profitable because the fan base isn't large enough to sustain it. Horror films have suffered from the same issue, and horror games have struggled for at least two decades with the problem. In the 90s, games were cheap. It might take a team of 10 or 20 people about a year to make a game, and the software and hardware were not that expensive. The size of games would start to increase, however, and the larger and more complex they got, the more expensive they were. The PS2 era would show the cracks. Haunting Ground, Rule of Rose, Cold Fear, Kuon, Echo Knight Beyond, Clock Tower 3, Fatal Frame 3, Galerian's Ash, The Thing, Baroque, Ghost Hunter, Obscure 2, Siren. All of them horror games, great and small, good and bad. All never made enough money. Silent Hill was popular and sold well in the West, but it never sold enough. I'm not certain any horror game at the time really did. 
By the time the PS3 era came around, horror game developers started to focus even more on trying to appeal to everyone, to make enough money for publishers to be happy and for the games to be profitable. It was often a bad move. Alone in the Dark, Resident Evil 6, trilogies like Dead Space and Fear would ultimately fail to impress horror games once they were watered down with more action and monetization. A lot of horror series would simply die in the PS2 and PS3 eras, failing to find a balance between creating a horror experience and being affordable to make. The only one that has managed to survive to the present day with few changes to its recipe is Fatal Frame, and it barely managed to crawl on hands and knees to 2021, having two of its modern games never release in the West, and the third only released digitally. If the remake on the Switch doesn't succeed, it may be the last Fatal Frame we ever see. Silent Hill struggles in this era. Reading interviews makes it clear that budget cuts, time problems, and issues of universal appeal are behind many of the things that fans don't like about the Western games. These problems would have existed if the title stayed in Japan, as is seen by all the Japanese horror games that never succeeded here. The problems would only get worse as the PS3 and PS4 era would see game budgets and teams balloon larger and larger. People often talk about how the games could not escape the shadow of Silent Hill 2. I think they might be missing the real Goliath casting a shadow on the series. The incredibly profitable, cheap to make, wildly successful Silent Hill. That success the team was always chasing would lead them to make decisions and attempt things that backfired or didn't work like they wanted. Silent Hill 2 was meant to be a horror unlike any other, and the success of their first game gave them so much freedom it backfired. It didn't succeed. Not then. So they had to make a game fans wanted, and they made it in 3. But reviewers weren't fond of how little things had changed, and fans still weren't buying it like they had the first game. So the fourth title comes out, and it's different, but now it's too different. Fans start disliking it, reviewers dislike it, it sells less. The team comes back to the drawing board for Silent Hill 5, and then... March 2006. KSET's parent company, Konami Holdings Corporation, would make the decision to merge all its subsidiaries into one company. Konami Digital Entertainment Co. KSET had already been working on the fifth game, but it would never see the light of day. It's not the only project that would vanish, nor the only series that would struggle in the new setup. The story goes that after Silent Hill 4, Konami disbanded Team Silent and sent the games west. The truth is, the games had all been made by different people, but they were all employees at Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo. A company of somewhere around 250 to 300 people at any given time in its 10 years of development. A company behind so many of Konami's famous titles. Silent Hill, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Gradius, Tokimeki Memorial, Sukoden, and Contra. So many incredibly talented people worked there, and many of them were working on Silent Hill at various points. Or experimental games like Shadow of Destiny, or Nano Breaker, or soccer games like Winning Eleven. The romanticized ideal of a team silent, an unchanging core team of developers who had a unique vision for Silent Hill that Konami disbanded, ignores what really happened. That KSET was a unique company with a lot of talented people that was disbanded, leading to the downfall of a lot of good games. The problem wasn't that these games didn't make money. It was that KSET was a video game company, and that was its central focus. The parent company, however, had many focuses. Konami is a games company, and a company involved in anime, trading cards, casinos, and pachinko machines. Video games are not their priority, and it has long shown. This is the real tragedy of Silent Hill, a tragedy shared with many other video games. A lost era in which the central owners of the brand cared about the games, including the executives who oversaw them. Later titles made in the West would be overseen by executives at a Konami headquarters whose priority did not seem to be making good video games at all. In fact, that still seems to be the case. They've managed to mess up every title they have. 
does it matter if there was a team silent? There were teams of people who worked on the game, and they were all at the same company, and many of them were central parts of the various titles. But each team was different, and it shows in how each game was different. Sato Takayoshi's style is dark and cerebral and haunting, and it comes through in Silent Hill 2. Toyama Keiichiro likes the weird and absurd, the unexplained and unexpected, like David Lynch and Twin Peaks, and Silent Hill is the weirdest of the series. Owaku wanted to tell a story rooted in female fear, and Silent Hill 3 is consequently a unique exploration of a female teen's worst fears that feels more grounded in the real world than the other games. Subiyama wanted to explore Japanese sensibilities, and for that reason, 4 draws more on folklore and visuals and even music from his home country. None of them are the same, but they share the same roots. Final Fantasy is similar in that way, a similar core design and themes with vastly different worlds, stories, and motifs. Few would argue that Final Fantasy IX and X were made by the exact same people with the exact same influences and themes just because it was made in the same country and company. Why are Silent Hill fans so determined to mythologize an unchanging group of Japanese developers who had an unchanging vision for Silent Hill? The truth is, this is an idea that hurts Western and Eastern developers. People to this day cry, bring back Team Silent. As if these many people haven't moved on with their lives. Interviews from the time show that most of the people that left Silent Hill did it on their own terms. They wanted to work on something else. They wanted to create new things. Toyama Keiichiro was happy to move on. Masahiro Ito left of his own volition. Sato Takayoshi, Hiroyuki Owaku, they all wanted to do something else. And even today, in social media places where you can speak to these developers, often fans who won't let go of this idealized past cause stress and annoyance for the developers that they won't leave alone. It leads to these developers feeling as if their glory days are behind them, as if anything they make now just doesn't matter, even though they're making such fantastic, beautiful works of art. It's as if they only have value because of what they did that impressed you. Demanding that Team Silent return ignores the fact that Silent Hill is a video game concept that could be worked on and created by so many talented people. Just because the games that have come out recently didn't impress you doesn't mean that someone else couldn't come along and make something impressive. Because the truth is, no one's always excited for every game that comes out. People remember the early days in a nostalgic way because most of those early complaints aren't recorded on the internet. You know, Twitter and Tumblr weren't around back then. YouTube wasn't a thing at the time. If Silent Hill 2 had come out yesterday, you would have had people on YouTube complaining about all the differences and changes and making angry screeds about how it wasn't a sequel. But because it happened in an ancient past that's not recorded in the same way, we can all imagine that it was a perfect, beautiful time before all the problems that the Western games brought. It's easy to want to point fingers and find someone to blame for why the series has ultimately seemed to have died out, cancelled and shoved in a drawer. Pointing the problems at people rather than a giant faceless corporation feels more cathartic. It's hard to feel like a company will be affected by your anger, because they won't. But you can hurt people far too easily. In addition, imagining that if only things were like they were back in the day feeds into the nostalgia we all feel for the past. Few seem to remember the games have always been controversial. They've always had mixed reviews and struggling sales. And even before the Western developers took over, Silent Hill had problems. But for all the flaws and struggles, I wouldn't change a thing. Not about the original games or the later ones. Silent Hill is a unique and experimental series that dares to go places few other games would, and did so long before other developers started doing it. It paved the way for a genre of games that were psychological, controversial, dark, and grim, more than the world had seen before. The games industry wouldn't be the same without it, warts and all. Even the later games, to me, are better horror games than many of the other titles I've played. And they always leave me thinking, 
wondering, gripped by the mystery and power that is Silent Hill. I, for one, am very grateful to everyone, East and West, who has ever worked on the series and done their best to return us to those foggy streets. And I am grateful for Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo. There may not have been a team silent, but there was a K-Set, and I will never forget all the beautiful stories they gave to the world. <laughs>